Hey everybody, welcome back to DTS. Today we're going to be talking about uh, part of the an interview that I had with Christy Gonzalez. This was a phone conversation that we had set up. Um, Christy Gonzalez is the mother of the late Kaylee Gonzalez, one of the four victims whose lives were taken on November 13, 2022 at 1122 King Road in a horrific manner. Um, she had heard of the show. She's been watching for some time, her and the family. And long story short, um, she has a message that she wants to spread out. And also she wants to clear up some discrepancies uh, that may be going around out there and some rumors and kind of clear those things up. So let's get into that. First and foremost, I do want to talk about the message that they want to send out and the uh, flyer that they have sent me to alongside with that message to be said. So this is from the Gonzalez's family, and I quote, this is her first birthday in heaven. And so in honor to go, in honor of her, go out and do something that you love or take the time to call a loved one that you haven't talked to. Uh, this along with Maddie Day, which was two weeks ago, uh, will become yearly events for these two best friends to remember them. We will never forget them. You know, our thoughts, deepest thoughts and prayers go out to the Gonzalez family and you know, the Mogan family, the Chapin family, uh, the Cronodal family everybody that was involved, including the friends uh, that are impacted by this. Uh, we also will never forget them and we'll keep their memory going in the most positive manner that we can possibly think of. Uh, like I mentioned before, um, Christy reached out to us because there was some discrepancies and, and things that she wanted to, to talk about. Now, this video here is a, a piece of a two hour interview that I'm not going to be airing, obviously. It's just going to be um, some of the things that she wanted to clear up. Um, we had a phone conversation. It was about approximately two hours, maybe just slightly less, I think about an hour and 48 minutes or so. And I'll be breaking some of the things that she had mentioned to us in parts that I feel I can say. Ms. Gonzalez has seen this video prior to its release and has given me the okay to release it. I know a lot of people are going to ask, will she come on the show, things of that nature. Um, right now, we haven't discussed any of that. Her daughter's birthday is coming up. Um, Father's Day is coming up. And so I, I don't want to be pushy on those type of things. We're just earning some trust here. Uh, maybe perhaps when she does feel comfortable and you know wants to talk, maybe give a few words. Uh, we'll do that later on down the road. As of now, that has not been discussed. And um, we'll see. So the reason why um, Ms. Gonzalez uh, contacted us is they wanted to spread the word about Kaylee's birthday. They saw our show with uh, with Kelly from Watch the Obsession and realized there was some time discrepancies and they thought that they could clear it up. I did not talk with Steve. Um, Steve is a little bit preoccupied right now. He's doing a lot of things. And um, Christy told, told me that she basically felt that she could um, clear up a lot of these discrepancies. So the discrepancies that we're referring to is that uh, while I was on Truth and Transparency's channel, um, there was some time figures that were stated by Steve during the interview with Olivia from Chronicles of Olivia, uh, whereas Steve mentioned a time frame of, you know, six hours, 10 hours and so on, referencing the time that sheriff uh, and authorities officially notified him of the uh, time of the passing for their daughter. And um, and when they first heard about the situation. Now, we'll start off from the top. They had absolutely no idea of the murders in the morning. Um, when it comes to the different times, according to Christy, Steve is, is terrible with dates and times. And so some of those things that he was mentioning, he was speaking out of emotion and they may not be 100% accurate. And he's got a lot of dates and a lot of times in his head, you know, the time in which the incident occurred, the time in which, um, you know, a family member called them, the time in which they finally made contact with the Moscow Police Department, and the time in which it took for the Moscow Police Department to have authorities go out there and explain to them what is going on. So there was a bunch of different times those things do get mixed up. And, and Christy kind of mentioned to me that he was emotional in those interviews and may have been speaking out of emotion and those things weren't, you know, perfectly accurate. And she wanted to be as accurate as she could be. And so uh, that's why she informed me of all this information. So she said that they got a call from a family, family member at approximately 1.32 p.m. And that um, they knew at the time of that Chronicles of Olivia interview that the 911 came out at 11.58 a.m. 
They were notified officially by the sheriff between 4.45 p.m. and 5, uh, 4.45 p.m. and 5 p.m. approximately. It wasn't set in stone. It's approximately around that time. So when they're referring to the six hours to get the call or the 10 hours, he's referring times that it took from 911 call to be notified or from the time that the passing to be notification or for the notification. And, and like I said, those things aren't accurate. Those are the moments where Steve was speaking out of emotion. So let's break it down a little bit more in detail. At 132, a call from a family member comes in stating that there was a uh, possible party and a shooting involved in which where Kaylee had uh, lost her life. Uh, the Gonzalez stated that their family began, you know, scrambling around, calling hospitals, calling police department, you know, trying to find out any information that they could. Uh, they did make contact with the Moscow Police Department. Basically, that told them that they didn't have any other information for them at the time of the call that they made with them. They asked them if they uh, should go down to Moscow, and they said no. I asked, you know, uh, Christy if they made it down to Moscow, and they told me no. And that the reason was when they did finally make contact with the police department, uh, they were told to stay put. And so and to wait for authorities. They didn't know what to do, so they stayed put. They did make contact with uh, Maddie's mom. It was about at the time of the contact it was about 20 minutes from Moscow. This was roughly right after they spoke with the sheriff's department. So that kind of leads me to believe that maybe perhaps um, she was told the same thing, you know, uh, as far as Maddie's mom, uh, you know, she may have called earlier throughout the day and told the state put and may have been made contact with the sheriff's department prior to. Now, according to the Gonzalez family, when authorities did come out there and talk to them, they they stated that um, they were given a card with a detective's name and told to call in the morning. Now, the Gonzalez or Christy, she did mention to me that between the time that they got a phone call at one at one thirty two p.m. and the time that the sheriff's department had shown up to their house, that they they heard rumors that this was a possible overdose with with coke and fentanyl. Now, those were rumors that were circulating around um, friends and students and citizens of Moscow and and that knew some of the, the, the children of, of, of Christie's Gonzalez's family. And um, when the sheriff came over, they asked him if it was a, um, you know, a drug related offense or if it was something else. You know, even at that point, they were still unclear about what the cause or the manner of death was and that they explained to them at that point that no, it was not a uh, drug related incident, that it was a um, it was a quadruple homicide. Now, the reason why I bring this up is that Dave, the University of Idaho student who's come forward and talked to us about um, certain things, he had mentioned that the morning of the incident that he had heard early on that there was an incident, uh, possibly a stabbing, and then uh, those rumors turned into an OD on coke and fentanyl. Now, Gonzalez family saying that they heard those rumors probably somewhere between 1.30 p.m. and 4.45 p.m. between the time in which they got the phone call from the relative to the time that they ended up making um, contact officially with the authorities at their residence, somewhere in between there. Dave says that he heard similar rumors. It was in the morning, um, perhaps um, I don't think that Dave's lying, but perhaps maybe the accuracy is in which what time he heard those things might be a little bit in question here. But who knows? You're, you're looking at a family that is in, in Coeur d'Alene and Dave, who's in, in Moscow, Idaho. Now, I did ask Christy if anybody, if she knows anybody or if Jack or if anybody else knows or has heard anything about people being informed prior to the 911 call. And outside of the persons who may have discovered the body, the answer, the bodies, the answer is uh, they they don't know anyone, uh, especially anyone that may have known something hours prior to the 911 call. I tend to believe them. Um, I, I I believe them. I don't think they're lying at all, 100%. And you know, at the same token, you know, like I said, memory and recalling things, and when it comes to uh, you know 
second or third party information. Sometimes those things can be inaccurate. When it comes to Dave, he was, um, you know, he's going back off of the memory of some things. Now he does have a, you know, he corroborates the time that he woke up with 930 because of, uh, or the time of 930 in the morning, having knowledge of some something happening was well, because he had to go to work. Now I'll be reaching out to Dave and, you know, getting a comment from him as well. And we'll probably discuss that, um, you know, a little bit further as far as, is it possible that, you know, he was off or, or, or you know, who knows? Um, you know, our goal here isn't to fall under one narrative. Um, the only narrative that we fall under is the truth. And we're just trying to pull up the truth here. So there is some consistencies there between the stories. Um, Dave mentioning that the uh, the rumor mill was that there was an OD on coke and fentanyl. And the Gonzalez family says that at a certain point in the day, not as early as what Dave claims he has heard, but at a certain point in the day, uh, this seems to be accurate. Now, referencing this being a drug house, uh, Ms. Gonzalez is not aware of Kaylee being involved in any drugs. She is very doubtful of that. Um, she is unaware, you know, she, she's very doubtful that Kay, of Kaylee's involvement in any drugs. She is unaware of anybody else in the house um, partaked in drugs. However, she doesn't feel that it was um, likely to the extent that some of these rumors are coming out due to the fact that Kaylee wouldn't have been cool with it. She wouldn't have been cool with those type of things going on in the house or, or people having those type of things. Anything especially that is stronger than what you could purchase in most states. Not in every state, but in most states. And, you know, Ms. Gonzalez mentioned that even those things that you can purchase in some states that are legal in some places and not in others, that Kaylee, to her knowledge, didn't partake in those things. Now, I asked her about Jack um, and, and asked him referencing as to, you know, what time did you call him? What time um, did he come over to the house? And, you know, the vetting process. And, you know, one of the biggest question marks that I had is, you know, if the Gonzalez family are waking up or they're getting rumors that this is going on and they're calling Jack and he's not answering. Well, it seemed kind of odd. Well, they have a, um, a response for that. At the time that they contacted Jack, Jack was already uh, being questioned by police, which is why he didn't have his phone. And they've mentioned some things about Jack that. Uh, a lot of it's in the PCA, a lot of it's in the PCA. So we'll go through a, some of those things that he had mentioned to them. It's somewhat hearsay because it's not coming directly from Jack to me. Um, but I, in my opinion, I, I find this to be very reliable information and it's backed up by the probable cause affidavit in many parts. Um, but like I said, there is a gag order. So I do got to be careful with what I do disclose. Uh, but at the time of the of them finding out and when it came to the time discrepancies the reason why jack didn't answer the phone was because he was already being questioned by police um we have found out that all bedrooms had locks doesn't necessarily mean that they were all using locks and there's some other information about coburger and and and, and his social media accounts that uh, we may go into uh, we may go into those things a little bit tonight. I do want to, you know, like I said, I want to co confirm with with Christy on some more things that we can go into. But as far as this portion of our two hour interview, um, this is what I feel comfortable putting out there. Uh, these were the discrepancies and referencing the time in which they found things out. There have been rumors that they would were were aware or knew and early in the morning there was rumors that uh, the 911 call came from um, them after hearing that they you know after hearing the rumors at 10 a.m that they showed up and that they may have been who called 911 they squashed all those rumors um, those things aren't true and like I said there's there's some other things that we're going through right now. And I just want to, uh, you know, oblige by the probable cause affidavit and the, I mean, not the probable cause, I want to oblige by the gag order and make sure that I don't overstep any boundaries 
um, and things of that nature. Uh, they did also mention one other thing, and that happened to be with the um, that I'll mention here, and that happened to be with the potential lawsuit in the future. Uh, this family isn't looking for money or trying to, you know, take the city of Moscow clean or anything like that. Uh, this is um, there's some concerns about procedure things, like for instance, we've talked about certain things here on the show, like you're talking about the. Um, We've talked about the uh, the bar stools that were on the back uh, sliding glass door. We've talked about officers being in there and you know not wearing proper clothing attire. Uh, there's been some other things that have been brought to my attention. Uh, perhaps maybe even like uh, the the recuperating of, of video surveillance, uh, things of that nature that they're a little bit concerned about, and um, you know procedural means. And so they feel that if something were to happen where if Koberger, let's just say, was responsible for this and he were to get off on a technicality or, or anything like that, that they are protected to go after and, you know, the city for making, you know, whatever mistakes they may have made, if they've been made. There's a lot of information that they're not aware of. You know, they weren't privileged to a lot of information. Um, they haven't spoken with Bethany or Dylan they don't know what their story is per se. Um, they they know a lot about what's in the probable cause affidavit, and, and just a few more things. And, but for the most part, they're they're kind of in the same boat as us. Uh, they've also explained to me some certain things, especially when it comes to the phone tower pings and how accurate those can be. And sent me a um, article on that that we'll be covering as well. I want to get a little bit more familiar with it before we come out here and talk about those things. Um, so stay tuned, keep it locked in, hit that like and subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Like I said, tonight we're going to be going live and we'll be talking a little bit more about th these, you know, these things that we're speaking about right now and, um, maybe answer some of your questions within reason. Like I said, I don't know everything. I don't know everything that happened. I do know a few things. Uh, I will say that a lot of the stuff that we had thought about, um, could be accurate. And so we'll talk about those things later on tonight. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the victims and the families of the victims and, and anybody who was impacted in this manner. And we feel for you. Our thoughts and prayers go out to you. Uh, happy birthday tomorrow to Kaylee Gonzalez, your first one in heaven. May you rest in peace.